and welcome to Breaking Down, the series where we take an in-depth look at a Fire Emblem unit from a gameplay perspective. Today we will be taking a look at the last surviving member of House Nouvelle, Constance. Whilst this series is not focused around plot, there is always a chance for spoilers and certain elements of the game and its structure and story will inevitably be mentioned, so if that is a concern for you, feel free to give it a miss. Also, where relevant, this is considering the maddening difficulty on a regular new game file with no exploits or excessive grinding. Constance is a member of the Ashen Wolves, and so is only available if you have the game's DLC. For her to be recruitable, you must have first beat Chapter 2 of the Cindered Shadow side story, where she can then be recruited from Chapter 2 of the main story or later on any playthroughs you do, with no additional costs attached. Her personal ability, Circadian Beat, gives her plus 3 magic and strength when she is deployed on maps without sunlight, and plus 3 defense and resistance when deployed on outdoor maps that are sunny. A permanently active stat boost is always going to be good, period, however the shade version is vastly superior to the sun. Constance is so frail that plus 3 defense isn't doing anything to change that, and the res is a situational stat at best. Either way though, this is a nice ability, it's free stats, but it's definitely better when in the shade. Constance's crest is the major crest of Noah, which offers a 20% chance to conserve a spellcast when using offensive magic. This is somewhat useful early on, but fades as the game progresses and you get more spellcasts naturally, unless it hits one spell in particular, in which case it's great. Overall though, there is literally no downside to this, you can always play around it since it has no immediate effect in the combat where it activates, and having a crest at all allows Constance to use relics without taking any damage, which is nice. As for Constance's skills, she holds boons in swords, reason, authority, and flying, banes in axes and heavy armor, and a budding talent in brawling. Honestly, these line up really nicely. Neither of the weaknesses really matter at all, so they can just be ignored. On the other hand, the boons fall in quite beneficial areas. Reason is great considering Constance is a magic-oriented unit and it's used for a lot of things. Flying makes it easier for her to access certain classes, Authority gives her the ability to use better and higher ranked battalions with less effort, and swords are… swords are there too, I don't really know why she has swords. There is very little to complain about here, a boon in faith would have obviously been nice, but missing it is hardly the end of the world. Ultimately, you get boosts in useful areas, the banes are in areas that don't matter, and it puts Constance in a really nice spot. The brawling hidden talent is weird, since most of the magic based classes are unable to use gauntlets in the first place, and female units like Constance can't use the better brawling classes, but hey, if you did want to go for a punchy Constance, you can, go for it. Mastering the budding talent does give her access to Mystic Blow, a brawling combat art which does magic damage instead of physical and offers quite a sizable might boost, but I really just still don't think this is worth going down. So let's get off of the letters and onto the numbers and take a look at Constance's stats, or perhaps stats would be a more accurate way to phrase it. Her magic is great and everything else exists. Her base magic of 12 is impressive, even when you factor in that she joins at level 3 at the earliest instead of level 1 and the 60% growth means it will develop very rapidly. Everything else is pretty much all bad all the time, her next highest growth sits at just 35% in speed, and her bases leave a lot to be desired across the board, ranging from mediocre to outright awful. Somehow though, this kind of manages to work. Sure, being fast or tanky would add a lot to Constance's game and make her significantly better as a unit, but with the high magic stat she is able to output good damage, and frankly that's all she wants to do. Since Constance is primarily a magic oriented unit, her spell list is going to be incredibly important to her playstyle and how good she is. Constance's reason list is black magic based as opposed to dark magic. Personally I usually prefer the alternative, but as far as black magic goes, Constance is one of the better users. One key theme of Constance's spells is their consistent high damage output, with access to Fimble, Vetra and Agnea's Arrow in the Reason Tree and Abraxas in the Faith Tree. Whilst these don't offer as much damage as some of the dark magic spells, they are pretty big hitters. However, there are two spells which really make Constance stand out because not only are they very useful, she is easily the best user of both of them. In her faith, Constance gets access to rescue at the B rank, which allows her to teleport an ally from a range dictated by the user's magic stat to her location. This can obviously be used defensively to bring back allies who are on low HP or in danger, or to perform hit and run attacks with units without needing to canto out, however it can also be used offensively by moving Constance forward and then bringing the ally with you. This basically lets you use Constance as a makeshift warp in the right scenario. Whilst not as flexible as a regular warp due to the fact it leaves Constance in danger, there are still a lot of scenarios where this can help, such as when trying to one turn clear a map or just during any ending situation. The other major spell comes from A Reason, and that is Bolting, which is a siege spell with a massive 10 range. 
With its 12 might, this allows for some very long range chip damage while keeping Constance extremely safe. Bolting's biggest downside is its limited uses, only being able to be used twice per map. However, the Crest of Noah can help with this if it activates and is a massive blessing when it does. Its range also allows Constance to perform linked attacks over a huge area. While her list of supports is relatively small, this can still be a nice bonus, especially if going down the Crimson Flower route. Since in part 2, Edelgard may benefit from this multiple times per turn thanks to Raging Storm. The rest of Constance's spell list is just fine, it packs a decent punch but doesn't offer much utility or anything really special outside of that. One of its biggest drawbacks is the lack of 1-3 range spells which can limit Constance's opportunities to do damage or force her to put herself in more danger. So how should Constance be used in a playthrough? Well as with a lot of mages, her early game doesn't offer too much variance, the class pathing here is fairly rigid. One thing that can be quite flexible is when Constance should actually be recruited. While she can be recruited as early as chapter 2, there are valid reasons for picking her up later. If you wait just one chapter and pick her up on chapter 3, there are a lot of benefits to this. At this point she will join at level 5 instead of level 3, putting her in the monk class instead of noble. Her faith takes a huge leap of 100 EXP from the very base of E to the base of D which also grants her access to heal. Authority gets a 40 point increase and moves her from E plus to D, and Reason sees a 48 point increase, pushing it closer to the next rank. This is a lot going in her favour and all comes for zero investment, you don't have to put anything into Constance to get these benefits. The only real downside here is she isn't available for chapter 2, so let's take a look at how that impacts her. Well firstly she misses two tutoring weeks, or does she? Whilst it is true that there are two weeks of instructing during this month, what separates them is a forced auxiliary battle, so being able to actually participate in both of these is highly unlikely. Of course she will miss both weeks of the weekly tutoring, but this isn't quite as bad as it initially seems. On top of this, instructing points are also quite limited, since this is the very early game, so she may not get a chance for instruction here at all depending on where your priorities lie. She also misses the forced auxiliary battle and the seminar. This probably doesn't matter. While some of the available seminars can affect things Constance would appreciate, these aren't usually the best choices and Constance isn't the best choice for them. As for the Orcs battle, Constance's contribution here isn't really necessary, nor will she get too much from it herself. This just leaves the chapter 2 mission where honestly Constance isn't a huge help. She will still be a noble at this point and suffer the effects of having her spell uses halved because of this. She probably won't have access to heal either, meaning she is quite one note, she just hits things with fire on the player phase. She can't take attacks, double, or provide any notable utility. This isn't exclusive to Constance by the way, a lot of the offensive mages in general struggle on chapter 2 with a couple of exceptions. For me this makes it a pretty easy choice to wait until chapter 3 to pick her up, you don't miss out on too much by not getting her earlier and she comes in a significantly more desirable position without you having to invest into her. You can also make the case for picking her up later, for example grabbing her on chapter 6 will make her level 11 and already promoted into the mage class. The main issue here is that she obviously isn't contributing to the chapters before this. Weirdly enough her faith actually goes back down to E if you recruit her at this time too and you obviously won't be able to develop her other skills to where you want them to be. As far as Constance goes I think chapter 3 is the optimal time to pick her up, although waiting if you don't plan on using her does have some merits. As we have already mentioned it, we will move on to the Mage class, which Constance will want to go into at level 10. I assume it goes without saying that at level 5 Constance goes into Monk. Mage gives Constance a small boost to magic whilst in the class and access to the Fire ability, which doubles the casts of her Fire spell. This is variably useful depending on how slowly you play and how much you are using her per map. Personally I've never found a need for 10 casts of the spell since she will have access to better spells at this time, but the option is hardly going to be a bad thing. However, the main draw of Mage is its master skill, Fiendish Blow, which grants plus 6 magic when the user initiates combat. Since Constance has essentially no enemy phase due to her frailty, this for all intents and purposes is just plus 6 magic. This is obviously very nice, more damage is a good thing, and the alternative class at this point, Priest, doesn't really offer anything you would want. This is all pretty standard so far, I've seen some vague discussions regarding getting some skills from physical classes, namely Darting Blow from Mastering Pegasus Knight which grants plus 6 speed when the user initiates combat, and Hit plus 20 from Mastering Archer which grants an additional 20 hit to all attacks. Darting Blow is completely unnecessary, I don't doubt that there will be some scenarios where it allows Constance to double where she would otherwise be unable to, but these are few and far between and the time spent getting this isn't worth it. I wouldn't recommend picking this up. Hit plus 20 does warrant a little more consideration since accuracy will always find a use and Constance's spells can be on the inaccurate side, 
I don't think it's necessary, but I can see how it would be helpful. If you did want to get this, I would master the class by just using her as an adjutant on an enemy phase unit with a knowledge gem equipped, rather than actually using her as an archer in battle. Although personally, I'd just give this a miss altogether. If you did want more accuracy, there is a better option that becomes available once you hit level 20, and that is Uncanny Blow, which you get from mastering the Valkyrie class. This grants an additional 30 hit when the user initiates combat. Personally, I prefer this option since Constance actually makes great use of the Valkyrie class while she is in it. It gives her a class modifier of 4 magic, access to Kanto, 6 move, and the range plus 1 ability can help compensate for her lack of 3 range spells. Qualifying for this requires B Reason and B Riding. This is more than attainable for level 20, and whilst at least in my opinion Valkyrie is not the best final class for Constance, the Riding experience may not go entirely to waste. More on this later. So if Valkyrie isn't the best endgame class for Constance, what do I think occupies that slot? Well, I personally think that Constance's best class is Dark Flyer, a level 20 class which requires B plus Reason and C Flying. The former is obviously very easy to reach since it's your primary skill throughout the game, and the latter is easily obtainable too thanks to the boon in the area and relatively low rank. Dark Flyer brings a lot to the table that Constance really appreciates. Seven move, flight, and Kanto massively boost her mobility, which outside of the obvious benefits this provides makes rescue so much more impactful since you have so much more freedom with which to use it. Flight in particular is huge for this as it allows you to bring allies over terrain which can be so helpful on most maps. On top of this, Dark Flyer also comes with a very useful ability in Black Tome Fair, which gives an additional 5 damage when using Black Magic spells, which is basically anything in Constance's Reason list. This is fairly self-explanatory, more damage is a good thing, and this gives you more damage. All of this combined gives Constance a lot to work with, and for how easy this class is to reach, only requiring middling ranks in 2 boon skills, it really is ideal. The biggest downside of this is that the class offers no modifier to magic, which can leave her behind compared to some other classes, however the aforementioned Black Tome Fair compensates for this when making use of reason spells. It also does not offer any additional uses of Constance's powerful but limited spells, but ultimately the benefits of this class help to enhance the two strongest elements of Constance's kit, with the Black Tome Fair boosting her effectiveness with bolting and the class's mobility massively helping rescue. This to me is why I prefer Dark Flyer for Constance, however there are other options too. The main one of these is Grimori, a level 30 class requiring A Reason and A Faith. These requirements are easily attainable even if they are high and Faith lacks a boon, since both of these are skills you will be raising anyway. Grimori does bring a lot to the table. Firstly, it comes with double uses of both white and black magic, meaning you get twice as many uses of bolting and rescue. This is fairly huge, especially with Bolting, since doubling the uses of it also offers twice as many opportunities to trigger the Crest of Noah, giving you even more casts. Grimori also offers an incredible plus 5 modifier to magic, so whilst it doesn't come with Black Tome Fair, this makes up for it with ease, and is actually better since it will also affect the white magic spells even out of combat for things such as Rescue's range. Unfortunately, whilst you do double Rescue's uses, it is actually quite heavily hurt here since Grimori is a footlocked class with just 5 move, meaning opportunities for Rescue's will be reduced and they will often be from less advantageous positions. This isn't the only way in which less move is bad of course, it also makes it harder for Constance to get into range to do damage or move out of danger when she is in it. Also, whilst access to more rescues is objectively a good thing, I feel it's quite uncommon that you will actually need six of them in a map, especially when you factor in that Grimori struggles to use them as effectively as a class like Dark Flyer. That being said, there is a lot of advantages to a Grimori, so if you do prefer to go with that as your option, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, they're both valid choices. I feel like these are the two big final class considerations for Constance. Other options such as Warlock, Dark Knight or Valkyrie tend to just hit middle grounds between this which don't do either as effectively, although none of these are bad choices and will still serve you effectively, just not as well as Dark Flyer or Grimori. In terms of the abilities, these can depend on how many of the accuracy skills you decided to acquire, but past this it's fairly self-explanatory. Black Tome Fair, even if it's a second dose, is always good, and the prowesses are handy, or the crit if you prefer that too. Fiendish Blow will also stick around for the long term. Another ability which I like to pick up is Move Plus One, especially in Dark Flyer, which is where the Riding EXP from Valkyrie comes back into play. Whilst this is a hefty investment, Constance honestly needs so little as part of her core build that it's easy to reach in a reasonable time frame. I will typically have a final build of Dark Flyer Constance with Black Tome Fair, Black Magic Prowess, Fiendish Blow, Uncanny Blow, and Move Plus One. One final thing to note is that if it is not already in use on another unit, the Relic Thyasus from Lawrence's Paralogue is a great choice on any mage, massively boosting their range. 
Constance isn't some overloading powerhouse. She's a mage on Maddening, and most, if not all of them, suffer from the same issues. Not being strong enough to one-shot since they don't get relevant combat arts, whilst also not being fast enough to double most enemies. That being said, Constance does hit pretty hard, especially for a magic user and especially in the late game, and her access to a siege spell is extremely beneficial, with rescue also bringing some very nice utility. She would be a lot more potent if she had access to more utility in her kit, either in her reason or her faith tree, however she is a very low investment unit who can bring a reasonable amount to a team and will contribute on every map you use her on past the late early game due to her flexibility and range. I hope this helps you get the most out of Constance. Thanks for watching.